Hi guys, I wanted to I wanted to come on and share a couple things with you that I think you're gonna like. I think you're gonna get a lot out of. Okay, I wanted to read a couple things to you. The first thing is, uh, okay, it goes like this: John Owen, the great Puritan preacher, spoke the following message to his congregation on April 9th, 1680. You know that for many years without failing, I have been warning you continually of an approaching approaching calamitous time and considering the sins that have been the causes of it. I have told you that judgment will begin in the house of God, that God seems to have hardened our hearts from his fear and that none knows what the power of his wrath will be. In all these things I have foretold you of perilous, distressing calamitous times these all now lie at the door and are entering in upon us god did send his awful judgments on that society john owen lived to weep over a flaming holocaust that engulfed london yet before he ever saw a single one of those calamities take place owen faithfully cried out from his pulpit I am going to show you how we ought to deport ourselves in and under the distressing calamities that are coming upon us and may reach, it may be, up to the very neck. Beloved, we are living in just such a time as Owen's, and in times like these there is only one response to the coming storm. The just shall live by faith. Owen admonished his people with tears get you an ark prepare an ark for the safety of you and your families then he added the ark is jesus christ there is no other way no other ark for isaiah the prophet said of our lord and a man christ shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadows of a great rock in a weary land that is our ark blessed are they that trust only in him i know of no safety no deliverance in the trials and afflictions coming upon the earth but in believing christ as our only refuge we may see dangers on all sides including a devil and his principalities who want to drown our faith in doubts but we have a fiery guard of angels surrounding us and a God who is under oath to carry us through any disaster we may face. So let me ask you, do you want to face the coming storm with quiet confidence and peace of mind? Then die today to all your own ways and means of saving yourself and commit the keeping of your life wholly to God's care. He's your God, loving shepherd, the good loving shepherd who is faithful to see you through all fix your eyes on jesus he alone is our hope i thought that was really neat and i got that one from david wilkerson um and that one is uh his sermon actually david wilkerson's message that was entitled get into the ark i wanted to share another thing with you that that it really is important. I heard it said so often. Don't be like the unprepared virgins. Keep oil in your lamps. Considering that, of course, people want to ask, or perdón, they want to say, I'm keeping oil in my lamp and the wick is trimmed short. I'm ready for the bridegroom's arrival. But what does that really mean? I read this about oil in the lamp and I thought of you right away. This is what I wanted to tell you. It is the oil that symbolizes preparedness. The oil is the variable that needs to be constantly replenished. It is when we bottle up extra oil and carry it around with us that we are prepared. We need the oil because it is the oil that keeps the flame lit. So where do we get more oil? I have several ideas. The first thing that comes to mind is that the oil is in worship, Bible study, 
fellowship with the faithful. Maybe we add oil to our lamps when we partake in Holy Communion. Another thing that comes to mind is prayer. When we make conscious contact with God through prayer, there is no doubt that our lamps are filled with oil. How does interaction with other people add oil to our lamps? Jesus talked about, Whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. Jesus talked about visiting the jail, tending to the sick, feeding the hungry, and giving water to the thirsty. We can collect food to take to the local food bank. When we do for those in need, we are putting oil in our lamps. Also, giving to missionaries and things that are benefiting the needs of others, passing out Bible tracts even. It is putting oil in our lamps too. All of those things is putting oil in our lamps too. And you know what I believe is putting oil in our lamps? When we edify other people by building them up in and keeping them strong, helping them keep strong in these days that are hard, and that doesn't cost a dime. That just takes a little effort out of us to talk to other people, talking about the Lord, keeping others strong. Okay, the common factor is that we're supporting God and God's people, which are everybody, rather than just taking care of our own selves without concern for the building up of the kingdom of God on earth. I hope that I have encouraged you to think of ways that each of you could fill your lamp with oil so that you can be prepared for the coming of Christ. After all, when he comes, he doesn't want to find us idle or squandering our God-given resources. I thought you guys didn't like that. And I know that in these last days, I'm sure it's been for you the same way it's been for my family, it seems like. It seems like sickness is hitting everybody from all the way around. And I'm not talking about viruses or the flu. I'm, I'm talking about some hard stuff. But by the grace and mercy that God gives us, we're hanging in fine. We're going to be all right. But emotionally, emotionally sometimes the attacks from other people or just the attacks that we feel in our own heart and feel that are against us the enemy loves to throw those darts loves to attack us those can really pay their toll on our lives so I encourage everyone every morning before you even set your feet off the bed before you even get up go in prayer to our Lord God and tell him thank you for how wonderful he is Thank Him for His greatness and how much He loves us. And then continue on and ask Him if He would cover you, please, with the armor of protection on your family members, on your children, on yourself. Ask this before you even get up and start your day. Ask that the Lord God will be by your side all day which we know he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but I think he likes it when we remember him in the morning before we even start the day. I love you, friends. And I just want to let you know that, and I want to let you know that he's coming. He's coming for us. I would say keep looking up, but the thing is, he could be here in the twinkling. You guys know that the twinkling of the eye I've heard is 11 one hundredths of a second. Well, that's what the General Electric Company has said it is. 11 one hundredths of a second. But anyway, I'm going to let you go now. And have a good day. And God bless you all. All of you, my friends. Thank you for watching this video. Bye.